Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of our SNAP series. Today I will be assisting viewers with the entirety of Unit 1 Lab 3, Modern Art with Polygons. Personally, I think this is one of the more difficult labs in the BJC curriculum, so be sure to consult your teacher if you don't understand any of the parts of this lab. Also, this episode will be covering the entirety of the lab, so it may end up being a longer video than most of the others. Finally, please note that a good deal of this lab is experimentation with code, and we will not be covering those segments, as they should be simple enough to understand. So let's begin. First things first, this is the basic algorithm that we were given by bjc.edc.org. And so our first objective here is to decipher what this code will do. So this algorithm will loop these blocks four times. So the turtle will first move 100 pixels in the direction it's facing, then wait half a second, and then turn 90 degrees before waiting another half second. So we can predict that this will likely draw a square. And we see that when we put the pen down and run the code, that is indeed the case. So now let's try to draw a triangle. Now a triangle only has three sides, meaning that we'll have to take a repeat block that only loops its code three times. Now we need to make it move a certain number of pixels or steps. So let's keep it at a simple 100 for now by taking a move block, putting it into the repeat block, and typing 100. Next we need to make sure the turtle will rotate a certain number of degrees to make another side of the triangle. Because we're making an equilateral triangle, the turtle needs to rotate 120 degrees. So we take the turn block and put 120 degrees inside the repeat. And uh, now we should be done. Let's just put a single weight block in the middle of these two so that the code is not finished in a fraction of a second. We can go to pen and hit clear to clear the square that we already have. And then if we run this, you can see it draws us a triangle. So that's page one of the lab. Now let's move on to page three. The reason we are skipping the second page in this tutorial is because as I stated in the beginning, I won't be covering the experimentation parts of the lab and page two gives you this code, this and this, which has all of the steps laid out for experimentation. So here we have the code provided for us on page three. On this page, we will be making a custom block to make the task of creating a specific pinwheel, like the one shown here on the stage, easier. The code here is what's making this pinwheel, and we need to copy it five times to make five different pinwheels. So you can copy it by right-clicking and clicking duplicate. And so the first pinwheel we have to make is this one shown here in this image. So as we can see, that pinwheel had three spokes, so we just have to change this repeat value to three and change this 360 over 21 to 360 over three. And we should be finished. So if we clear the stage, put the pen down and then run this, we see that we get the pinwheel that's very similar to the one here. If you want it to be exact, you could clear it again, go to motion, take the point in direction block, have it point direction 90, which means it'll face directly right and then run this, now we have exactly what's shown in the picture. Not sure if that's that important, but eh, if you want to be a perfectionist, there you go. Uh, now we just need to do this four more times with four, five, six, and 12 branch pinwheels. So I'll let you guys do that on your own since it's just more of the same. So let's move on to making the custom block that can allow us to make pinwheels much more easily. So as we covered in a previous video on creating custom blocks, you can create a custom block by right clicking anywhere in the gray scripts area and clicking make a block. So we want this block to be a motion command block titled pinwheel comma branches. Hit OK. But we want to be able to change some of the input values of the code we run in this custom block. So we can do this by clicking the plus here. And here we got to name an input for the block. Let's call it number of branches, just like bjc.ec.org does. Make sure input, na yeah, input name is selected and not title text, or else number of branches will become part of the title of the custom block and not an input like we want it to be. Now I can hit OK, and then simply drag this chunk of code into the custom block, and then we can move this number of branches into the repeat block value and into this Th where this 3 is, so that 360 is divided by it. Uh, now when we type a value into the custom block, that value will be used to in the repeat block 
and 360 will be divided by that value, making the work of editing both these values be done at once, since they will always be the same when making pinwheels like we are. The last thing we are going to do on this page is the take it further, only because this is a very challenging one. If you don't need to, choose not to, or do not need help with the take it further portion on page 3, you could skip ahead in the video now. Alright, so I'm now going to assist you guys with the take it further on unit 1 lab 3 of bjc.edc.org. Uh, and it's made of two parts. The first part is to make art similar to this, and the second part is to make an animation like this one shown up here. Now, normally, we do not show the take it furthers or the if you have time sections because most of the time the information provided on the lab is sufficient for, you know, you guys to figure out how it's done. For this specific lab and maybe some others, however, that is not the case because the information that you're given so far is definitely not enough to make some of these. At least that's what I think. So I'm going to help you guys a little bit with that. And another thing, this part is completely unscripted, so I'm sorry if there's a lot of cuts or stutters or if I sound very unprofessional because this is not scripted. I'm doing all this as I speak. So let's start. You, as you can see, I'm on a new stage and I've made pinwheel, the pinwheel block that I covered just recently. And so the first thing we're going to do is to try to create something like this. So it, we could take the pinwheel block and pick something with a relatively high number of branches. So let's say the 15. And we see that that'll just draw an old pinwheel. So this turtle will always draw this pinwheel if it's in this spot and facing this direction. So basically the way to make something like this is to just have it move by itself after it completes a drawing. So how we're going to accomplish that is after this is finished drawing the pinwheel, we want to go to the motion tab and take a turn block. Let's have it turn like uh, about 45 degrees. And then let's go to the control tab, get a repeat. Let's have it repeat around uh, say three times to start off with. Put both of them in there, clear the stage. And now if we run this, you'll see first it will make the pinwheel as we saw before. But then, when it's finished, it will turn 30 degrees and make another pinwheel, the same one that it made originally. So that's the basic idea on achieving designs that look like this. Uh, and now we just have to apply, well, simple mathematics to get it into a full ring. And we also have to use this set pen color 2 block so we can have it change colors as it draws different circles. Actually scratch that. I think changing the pen hue would be an overall better idea. So we don't have to use as many set pen color twos after every time it draws a pinwheel. Instead we could just have it change its hue by a slight amount. Alright, now that we got the basic idea down, uh, we should probably change the background of the stage because most of these colors, if they're very light, will be very difficult to see. So if we click on stage here in the sprite in the sprite corral. We can go to the we can take the set background color two block, and we can click on that square and change it to a very dark color, preferably black. Click on it, and now our stage is very dark. We go back to the, our original scripts by clicking on the sprite here, and now we can get to work. So, a pinwheel with fifteen branches is. A bit too big so I'm gonna reduce it down to about 10 and remove it from the repeat block see how it looks uh, yeah that's a pretty good size so we're gonna clear and let's set the the turtle back in its original place we can take the point and direction block and if it's pointing in 90 it'll turn right hmm actually reducing this would just make it have very few actual pinwheels in the final design. So we could instead, so after this pinwheel is drawn, if we open it, we see that it just stands where it is. But we could take another move. So after it finishes, we could set the pen up, 
have the turtle move a certain number of steps forward. Let's say, um, I think 25 should be enough. And then, actually it would make more sense if this was on top of the pinwheel. So, the, so before it starts, the pen is going to be lifted up. It's going to move 25 pixels in the direction it's facing. Then it's going to put the pen down, drawing the pinwheel. Then after the pinwheel is finished drawing, we could have it lift the pen again so it doesn't continue drawing. Have it move back to zero, 0 in the center of the stage where it is now. And then have it turn. So let's see how this would look. It moves forward, it draws, returns, draws, returns, draws, turns. And we see we can split it up so it looks a lot less clumped this way. So now by simply increasing the number of steps it moves forward, so let's let's double that to 50, clearing the stage, and running this, we see that they're all now split up relatively. And they're all drawn in a full ring. So I increase the number of branches each pinwheel has from 10 to 15. And now we look like we have a pretty decent drawing. Now we just have to focus on changing the hue. So since this is repeating itself five times, we just have to change the pen whenever it repeats. So we could just set it right in the beginning and have a set pen color to in the beginning of that. So it always starts at this shade. And now when we clear it, how we run, oops, right. See it's orange, then yellow, then green, then darker green, and then a light turquoise. And so that was that's basically how you would do this section. Uh, if you want to make something more extravagant, feel free to open up the pinwheel block and perhaps reduce the number of steps it moves and how much steps it moves backwards. But be careful when you do this because you still ha are using this block in the pages going forward. So perhaps it would be better not to tamper with those yet. If you really want to make it look similar to the ones here, then you're pretty much going to have to reduce the number of steps here. But before doing this, I strongly recommend, first of all, going to the Motion tab, because that's where the pinwheel block is, right-clicking on it, and then clicking Duplicate Block Definition. And then, for example, click on this plus, go to Tile Text, and put something like, I don't know, B here, and then OK. So now you will have a second custom block that you are free to customize while you leave the original one untampered. So if you do end up changing the number of steps this moves forward and back, make sure that the back is less than the forward, of course, and also negative. Um, you could change this repeat and turn to much different numbers. So for example, let's have this 30 degrees and repeat it 12 times, moving 50 steps forward. You will end up getting a much different design one that could hold more circles because the pinwheels overall are much smaller. Change the steps. There we go, that's beautiful, right? But we're not done yet. We still have to make the animation here. 
as the second part of the Take It Further. So this shows a pinwheel going from three branches to 15 branches and then back down. Um, and here's what baffles me. It's that if you're doing the labs in the correct order, then I don't see any way that you would know how to make something like this uh, unless you have prior experience, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you might have, you might know, but I'm going to show you regardless. So let's start at a new project. We're going to set the stage color to black, like in the sample. I'm going to go back to the sprite, set its color, something a bright, something like a bright yellow, and get to work. So of course, uh, we're going to need the pinwheel block. I've recreated here with the correct amount of steps, 100 forward, 70 back. So because we're going to have very big pinwheels made here, uh, it wouldn't make much sense to have the turtle start in the center of the stage because all of them would go down and eventually be off screen. So let's take this go to X, Y block and have it be go to X negative 100 and Y around like, maybe 150. Oh, that's a little too high up. So let's have this at 100 and have this at negative 50. That's more reasonable. So now we can model what we want this to look like by first taking a pinwheel block with three branches. Forgot to put the pen down, that's my mistake. It'll make a three branch pinwheel, then four, five, six, and you see it's going to continuously increase downward until we get to 15, and then we're going to have it go backwards. So, what I envision to be able to do this is two things that we have not done yet which is using variables and using this block in the control tab called warp so essentially what warp does is whatever is inside warp will be done immediately so that's how you get all these pinwheels drawn immediately without the turtle cursor being having to draw each out individually. So first I'm going to open the pinwheel block and remove these weight blocks because we can't have any slowdowns when making an animation like this. So like I said earlier, uh, you probably want to um, duplicate this block definition before making adjustments like this in case you need this exact block later but uh, I'm just going to adjust this one for now actually looking at this animation I notice one thing when they have their cursor move forward a hundred units they don't move back 70 they move back 50 so I'm going to change that on my pinwheel block to move minus 50 so that the pinwheels that we draw look a little more similar to the ones that are given. Uh, you probably don't have to do this, so I'm just going to do it to be as close as possible to what they're giving. Okay, so let's actually begin the process of creating this animation. So we're going to first go to the variables tab and make a variable. Now this variable, we can name it whatever we want, but let's keep it clear. So let's name it uh, branch number, and by number I'm just going to put the number symbol. Uh, now, when you make a variable, that'll appear here. So you can get that to disappear by clicking the check. And now it's no longer visible, but you could still use it. So first you're going to have to set branch to an, an amount. So you get the set block, click the set arrow, click on the variable you want to set to a value, and we're going to set it to three because three is how many branches we're going to have in our initial pinwheel. 
So then you're going to want to link this to your pinwheel branches block. And where this is says branches, you want to instead take this variable and drag it into there. So the next thing we need to do is to have this increase. So we can have this set to three. It'll draw it. And then we're going to change the branch number by one. So after it draws, branch will change by one, meaning it'll increase by one. And then we want it to draw again. So we could go to the control, get a, I'm just going to take a forever block for now to just visualize the loop. Clear. And then when we run this, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, obviously, that's not what we're doing. So let me stop that. So instead of using the forever block, we want this to increase until it's 15. So if we could take the repeat until block, put this in there, and then we are going to go to the operators and get this equal boolean and now we need to repeat this until branch is not equal to 15 but equal to 16 because when this let's say it starts at 3 then 4 then it goes to 5 then it goes to 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 it gets set to 15 which is the biggest pinwheel that we need to make. Now, after it gets changed by one to equal 15, it'll go through the repeat until block, but when it detects that branch is equal to 15, when it detects that branch is equal to 15, it will stop and it won't actually draw the biggest pinwheel that we need, which is size 15. So we need to change this by one to 16, so it doesn't make the 16th pinwheel. Now, if we run this, a pinwheel gets bigger and bigger and stops at 15 branches. But this isn't an animation, so what do we do? So, Well, that's where this warp block comes into play. What warp does is whatever's in it will all happen at once. So that's how you get this effect where you don't see it being drawn. It's just there. So we can do that by opening our pinwheel block and putting this repeat loop inside a warp, clearing, and now you see this did not move. All of those pinwheels just appeared, and that's the first step of what we want to do. And now if we take a clear and a warp block and we put the pinwheel and the clear in it, and then that inside the repeat, we get an animation because this repeat sorry not this repeat this warp will make these happen at the same time well almost same time so it will clear whatever's on the stage then this pinwheel will be drawn which as we established will also all be at once because of this warp and then it will get changed and then it will get cleared and another will be drawn immediately creating this effect. Now if we add a wait one second at the end of that, we get the first stage of our animation. However, the problem is we don't currently have a way to get it to go small, to, well, to get smaller again. So let's add that now. So to make it smaller again, we could use the if else block in conjunction with the forever block. I'll show you how. So we want if branch is equal to 16, then we'll make it smaller. We'll put this repeat until branch is equal to 16 in the else. And then put this all in the forever block. So first, when we when branch is 16, I'm going to duplicate this section to do that. I'm going to take a change branch number by 
and we're going to have it change by negative 1. So this way, the branch number decreases. Ignore the background sound, I'm sorry if you hear that. Uh, we're going to take the weight one second, and we can put it um, at the bottom here. And then we can take another repeat until, I'm sorry, not that one, another repeat until. And we can repeat until branch is equal to 2 because for the same reason why this is 16 and not 15. But now it would be better if we set this to 2 initially and then move this change to the top there. So yeah, we'll see if this works and then I'll explain maybe why it works. 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, oh, oh I was miscounting. Um... Ah, I see why. So, let's say branch is currently 14, and it's still running through this. So this will change it to 15, it will draw it, wait a second, but then after this repeat until has checked for it to be 16, it'll then change to 16, making an additional pinwheel that we don't need. So we can change safely change this back to 15, and this back to 3. Then change this back to 15, this back to 3, and perhaps it'll work the way it's meant to. Oh, my bad, that stays at 2. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and we did it. Uh, to make it exactly like here, we could make the cursor or turtle invisible by going to looks tab, finding hide, clicking on it. And now we have exactly what's shown in the animation. Like I said, sorry for the sloppy execution. I am not scripting this portion and am doing it as I'm speaking. So we have concluded the take it further section. And like I said, don't worry if you don't get this because we have not explored the warp block and I don't think you will for not in this unit. I th a different unit is when the warp comes up. So I don't know why they put this ticket further here. But now you know. And with that, we can finally move on to page four, where we will be editing our pinwheel and custom block to make our pinwheels even more customizable. The main thing I will be assisting with on this page is the two additional inputs we will ultimately be putting on our custom block. So if we right click it and click edit, we can add more inputs to the block by clicking this plus again. First, let's add more to the title. We want to be able to change the size, so let's add size, making sure that title text is selected. Then we hit OK. Uh, then let's add the size input by doing the same thing, typing size, but this time making sure the input name is highlighted. The other thing we want to be able to customize is how many pixels the turtle moves backwards when creating the, each branch of the pinwheel. So let's add the backup title text. And once again, the backup input. Finally, we want to drag these input names to the proper area in the code. So, 
Because this first move block determines the overall size of the pinwheel, we will drag size to it. And then because this second move block determines how many steps backwards the back how many sorry how many steps backwards the turtle will move when making the pinwheel, we drag back up there. But there's a slight problem here. The way we arranged it here, the backup value we put in the input of the custom block must be negative or else it won't work. The turtle will just keep moving forward. So let's make it a little easier on ourselves by going into the operators tab, getting either the multiplication or division block. I'll take the multiplication block, putting backup into one and negative one into the other cell, putting that back into the move block. And now if we put a positive number in this input, it will turn negative because it's multiplication and so the turtle will move backwards like we want it to. Uh, we should be done with page 4 after hitting OK. Now let's move on to page 5 where we will be making even more custom blocks being the asterisk block and the polygon block. Let's start with the asterisk block. What this block is hoping to achieve is to create an asterisk using the pinwheel block we made earlier. As you probably learned from experimenting on page 4, the pinwheel block forms an asterisk when the size input is equal to the backup input. So first let's create the block. By now you guys are probably familiar with how to create a block so I'm going to speed through this section and all you really need to know is that we need two inputs, the number of branches and the branch length. So once we finish creating the block, we insert the pinwheel block into it. And now we need to properly insert each of the inputs. Because the bra because branches is shared by both custom blocks, obviously the branches input goes here. And because we need to make an asterisk, asterisk, the size and backup need to be the same. So we could put length into both of them. Now let's create a polygon block using the pinwheel block as well. It's actually very similar to the asterisk block, so let's go to the motion tab where we have it saved, right click on the asterisk block and click duplicate block definition to clone it. Uh, and now we can use this clone as our foundation. So let's click on this asterisk where we typed and change it to polygon, making sure title text is still highlighted. Now you can change these parts of the title text to whatever you want, but right now you just need to know that the way the pinwheel block creates a polygon is by having a backup of zero. So we simply remove length from backup and insert zero. And with that we should be concluded with page 5, so let's move on to page 6. Okay, so on page 6 we are presented with the 4 block which has many different uses, and I'm going to help you guys with some of the more challenging problems given to you by this page involving the use of four as well as your other custom blocks and some new, some new blocks. So first I'm going to explain how the four block works. If we head over to the control tab, we can see that the four block is available to us here. What four does is it provides you with an index i, which you will set from one number to another number. So why would you use this? over something like repeat, because essentially they're the same thing, aren't they? Both of them loop for the number of times you put an input in. Well, 4 works a little bit differently. For example, if we go to the motion tab, take our pinwheel block, we can set, let's say, 4i equals 1 to 10, so that's for 4 index equals 1 to 10, it will run this. But we can also use this index in as an input for our pinwheel. So let's put it as our backup. Let's set for i equals 1 to 100. Give our pinwheel 5 branches with the size of 100. This means that for i equals 1 to 100, it'll increase each time. It will draw a pinwheel with this, and the backup is going to be i before it loops, 
the i increases by one and this does it and this sorry this occurs again except with the new i value so if we run this it's going to draw a pinwheel as you can see and each time the size is decreasing because the backup is increasing so eventually we're going to have all our pinwheels drawn and it's going to get to its smallest amount which is going to ultimately be an asterisk so that's basically a, the gist of how the four block works so the first thing i'll be helping with on this page is going to be this nested squares so it says to build a new block titled nest squares that uses both four and polygon to draw this shape so we can do that so first we need to make the block right click make a block let's make it another motion block called nest squares comma squares and then let's have the input be number of squares because that's ultimately what the input's going to be the number we put in here is we want it to be the number of squares that is drawn by this block so then we go to control get our four block and now we want the number of squares we draw to be equal to how many the number we put in this input so we just put number of squares into this section of four then because a square is ultimately a polygon we're going to use our polygon block that we made in the previous page and the number of branches we want is since it's a square we want it to be four but the branch length is a little more interesting if we look here we see we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten squares now if we just make this value i all of these are going to be very close together and they're going to be nearly indistinguishable so instead let's go to the operators take the multiplication block take i and multiply i by let's say four now if we put apply okay and take our block we should be able to write 10 squares and it'll go ahead and draw our 10 nested squares just like shown in this picture now of course i put the value a little too small in this multiplication so it's obviously not going to be that big but you can change that by just making this a greater number the next thing we're going to do is create this nest polygons block which is going to be very similar to nest squares except it's not just going to be a square it's going to be whatever polygon we want so let's clone this block definition to use as a base. Let's call it nest polygons and have this sides. Actually, this is already has the number, the size we want. So we could just, yeah, we could call this size. I'm going to rename this input to size just to make it a little easier and replace it here. And then we need to have it detect the specific number of sides. So, by the way, this number of polygons is what the size is. So, sorry. Yeah, the number of polygons is the size value. And the number of sides, we can add sides. So now it's very simple. We just have to replace this branch number with the number of sides. And we should be done. Let's test it. So let's keep this with a size of, let's say 20. And let's have it draw nested pentagons. See, it's now drawing nested pentagons. I'm gonna stop that early, clear. Let's try it with size of 50 and nested octagons. I stopped a little, a little early, so it's going to be making them in this direction. But we could see that it's working the way we want it to.
And now the last thing I will be assisting with on this page is this shape that they ask us to draw. So if we look here, we could see that it, the way it draws this is by drawing a triangle, then a square, then a pentagon, then a hexagon, and it keeps going, adding one more side each time, while also increasing the size. And that's basically how we do this. So we can do this again by using our four block and our polygon block. So now if we look at this, we could see that it goes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the biggest shape we have here is a 14 sided polygon, but in the smallest we have is 3. So here we can change for i equals 3 to 14. We can draw a polygon with that number of branches and the branch length is going to be that times, let's say, 15. It's probably too big, but we'll try it out. So now if we run this, we can see that it does draw similarly to what we want, but it's not really what we're aiming for. As you can see, this is making everything in this one spot, while here we have it originating and going uh, outward, I guess you could say. The triangle's in the center and the square, and every shape is centered on the y-axis at least. But here, it's just starting at this point, and it's all condensed to one side. So how can we fix that? Well, we can fix it if I actually paid attention to what we were supposed to do, and we're supposed to put a branch length that's the same for each, because as we could see here, each of these sides are equal to this one side. So if you have to put a consistent branch length, let's just say 50. Now if you run this, it should be what we're aiming for. And we should be done. Finally, page seven is just a creative project that you'll have to do on your own. This mini video, these mini videos here on bgc.edc.org uh, do a great job of showing what's needed on this page, so you guys should not have any trouble. So thank you for watching this very long video. I hope it helps some of you who are struggling to understand some of the concepts of this lab, especially some of the take it furthers, or if you have time questions given. Next episode will be on Unit 1, Lab 5, Follow the Leader. I wish you luck on your future comp sci endeavors.